The first step to start the project is opening general settings window. Pick appropriate region from the drop-down list. After clicking the apply button, a warning pops out. It informs you that it will not be possible to change the region in the later stage of your design process. Below you can insert all necessary information about your project. In the general data tab, user has to provide all necessary information about the designed underfloor of Honor heating system. As you can see, some fields are empty and some have none value. In the first case, it's obligatory to provide a value. Some drop-down lists are empty if the system doesn't require certain type of element. For example, here we can't choose a panel. In the pipe spacing area, check the boxes with values you prefer. When data is complete, on the right side we can see calculation results. Below you can provide room internal temperature, supply temperature, temperature of the room below, delta T and maximum loop pressure drop. Continuing to floor structure tab, we can pick the floor covering resistance and other floor characteristics. In this instance, the panel insulation is grayed out. That's because this system doesn't use panels, as we already determined in the General Settings tab. Under the Constants Show button, user can look up some fixed values used in the project for floor structure. In the Loop Settings tab, we can choose pattern type for the underfloor heating system. And lastly, in the Templates tab, user can save all the settings for the further work. After clicking OK button in the lower right corner, plugin will generate appropriate families, tags and view templates. This might take a moment. Now we can see that all previously grayed out icons are active. In the View Properties window, scroll down to View Template Parameter and choose the one provided by the UFH plugin. If there are spaces already created in the model you're using, you can ignore the next step. Otherwise, to create spaces, click on the Spaces button in the Heating Demand panel, then click on the View area to indicate their location. Spaces contain a great deal of data. Once spaces occur in the model, click on the Loads button to provide required heating loads assigned to them. One way is to type a value in the required heating load column. After clicking Apply button, the value will show up in the UFH Design Heating Load. Another method would be to click on specific heat load in the upper right area of the window. This allows user to provide values for all or some spaces. If you deem the values to be off, you can always adjust them manually. Now we can see these values in Spaces properties. Next step is to place a manifold. By default, the biggest available type of family will show up. Later, the manifold instance will adjust its size and the number of connectors to the amount of linked floors. To place floors automatically, click on the appropriate button on the UFH floor panel on the ribbon. Choose the spaces where floors should be created. Clicking OK button creates floor slabs. The magenta color indicates the floor is heated in the standard way. To assign a manifold to the floors, click on the button Assign, pick the manifold, select one or multiple heating zones, and click Finish. Currently, my floors don't have connectors, so this error will show up. You can click OK to have them added automatically by the plugin. In the next window, choose a source file for door location. This can be the active model or any linked one. Now, user can provide the name for the manifold. Plugin displays a confirmation that floors have been assigned to the manifold. As predicted, the manifold decreased in size. It also changed the amount of output to the number of assigned floors, in this case two. Plugin created connectors at the doors, which user can move along the floor slab edge. If you'd like to change the edge, choose the Pick New Option from the ribbon. We can divide floor into smaller parts. 
Start by clicking the detail line icon in the UFH floor panel and drawing a split line. Draw manually a single or multiple lines to serve as a referential dividing element. Click on the split floor icon. Select the floor and click finish. Select the dividing lines and click finish. The floor has been divided. Lines can be deleted afterwards. After splitting, the top part of floor is not connected to the manifold. However, after clicking the hydraulic calculations feature and checking the manifold, the plugin asks if you'd like to add a missing connector for it. After calculations has been processed, a window with warnings pops up. You can close it and retrieve it later by clicking the warnings button on the right. The hydraulic calculations window is divided into two tables, manifolds and floors. In the part related to floors, in the number of suggested parts column, we find suggestions if the floor should be furtherly divided. In this case, floor number one should be divided into two parts. We can conduct the split automatically by marking the floor's checkbox and automatic division checkbox above. Clicking on the Detailed Loop Setting button opens an additional window with Split Preview. Here, user can also change the number of split parts or the layout. When we use this method to split the floor, all parts are automatically assigned to the manifold. There are also connectors created. The Connect function on Draw functionality panel allows for smart modeling of connecting pipes between the manifold and the floor. In the pop-out window, you can check the information about created pipes. You can pick the pipe type, adjust elevation offset, and feed pipe length. Indicate the side of the manifold on which the connections are to be generated by clicking the area in front or behind the manifold. Moving on, we have a few options on how to connect these pipes with floor connectors. One way is to right-click on the endpoint of the pipe and draw a pipe placeholder. As you can notice here, this connector has supply on the top and return below. To switch this layout, select the element and press spacebar on the keyboard. Now align the return pipe placeholder to the connector return point. Connect the elements by dragging and dropping pipe placeholder endpoint. Make sure you pay attention to the connecting points and the connector. There are two of them, so make sure to pick the proper one. After sketching the connection this way, go to Draw Functionality panel, click on the Feed Pipes icon to expand the list and choose Generate Tool. Select the manifold to turn placeholder line to supply and return pipes. Another way is to right-click on the endpoint of the pipe and draw a pipe. Here we need to change the connector direction again to connect return pipe to return point. Repeat the steps for supply pipe. We can also draw connecting pipes starting from the connector. In this example, let's first split the floor and make the top part heated by feed pipes. To do that, recreate the steps for splitting floors manually. First, create a reference detail line, then choose Split Floor tool and select Floor Slab and Line. Click Finish after each selection. The floor has been divided into two parts. The bottom floor part will be connected here. We will be changing the type of the floor. As you can see in the type selector, there are three types depending on the way of heating. To change the floor type, select the floor and open Floor Properties window. Here, user can choose if the floor should be heated with feed pipes. Change this value to Yes and click OK. Change has been applied and is indicated by yellow color. Let's change the position of connectors according to the new layout. To change the distance between feed pipes using plugin, click on the feed pipes icon to expand the list and choose align feed pipe. Pick one of the available options. 
Select the pipes you'd like to align. The first selected pipe will remain in its original location, and others will move to maintain equal distance from one another. Let's create the peripheral zone. Create detail line to be used as reference. Click on the Peripheral Zone tool in the UFH floor panel. Select the line and click Finish. Click on the floor and then click again on the non-peripheral part of it. Change has been applied and is indicated by green color. Now let's move on to the Generate a Loop feature located in the Draw functionality panel. After activating the tool, select all of the floors where loops should be generated and click Finish. After pipe loops have been generated, user can manually make adjustments to their layout if needed. We can see that the smaller pipe spacing is used in the peripheral zone. Finally, model can be annotated with prepared tags. Detailed manifold tag can be changed to show information about all connected floors, in this example 4. A simplified manifold tag is also available under the name UFH manifold tag. User can also tag floors with less detailed UFH zone heated connection tag or UFH zone tag. The latter shows information about pipe spacing, pipe type, and other parameters. For spaces with peripheral zone, use the UFH zone tag pH that encloses data about them after slash. After the design is complete, user can go to Results tool in the Calculations panel. In the window, select a manifold and click OK. Results can be exported to PDF or Excel files. Data is shown in three tabs general data, list of rooms heating, and bill of materials.